What's going on, everybody? It's Ricky with Video Homicide. Welcome to day 25 of the 31 Days of Horror. We are almost done. We got six more to go. So uh, we're going to do a Wes Craven film because, you know, I, I love this movie I'm about to talk about. And it is from, I believe, 1984 or possibly 85. But the film in question is Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, which is a staple. You know, it's, it's one of those horror films. Uh, horror franchises, horror icons that has uh, really chiseled itself into the concrete of horror history. You know what I mean? So basically the story, which I'm pretty sure all of you know, I'll give you a quick little recap. It's all about the story of this guy who was uh, you know, a school janitor or a school gardener or a school handyman that was uh, you know, accused of, of uh, you know, hurting or killing kids. And later on in the remake, they had him as like a, a child, like a, like a sex predator. But, you know, I, I, I kind of like him more as a child killer than as a child, you know, rapist, because I think it's I, I think it's more sinister <laughs> to rape a child than it is to kill one. But uh, that's a conversation for a different type of, uh, you know, court of law. But anyways, um, he gets he gets off on a technicality. So he's freed. And then all the, the parents involved. Uh, they get together and they burn him down. They track him down at an old boiler room and now uh, they burn down the boiler boiler room and he basically leaves his curse or like, you know, it, 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 there's never a scene where he's like, I'm going to kill your children. But there was that one Simpsons episode where groundskeeper Willie kind of was the Freddy Krueger character. But anyways, um, he comes back in, into the children's dreams and scares the fuck out of them and then basically keeps them awake as long as he can. And then, uh, when they finally go to sleep, that he basically has free range. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, he rules the dream worlds, of course, and um, it's really interesting stuff. So let's get into some of my favorite scenes of this movie. So this movie really did scare the living fuck out of me as a young boy. Uh, I think it scared everybody. This is the one in the franchise that I think is obviously the best. Uh, and you know what? I kind of like part one, two, and three in that order, and I don't need any of the other ones. I don't need any, I think they're all shit, uh, you know, I know a lot of people hold them near and dear, I just cannot fucking watch them, I get so bored and agitated, like, the only thing, the only reason why I would go back and watch those later sequels is just to see the deaths, okay, I don't need to see these fucking kids acting like little bastards and stuff, I fucking, you know, I, I don't, I do not care, so, part one, some of my standout scenes are, uh, of course, you know, I believe it's probably the first murder, and that's Tina that gets killed in uh, the bedroom with her boyfriend, Rod. And, uh, you know, it's like a total bloodbath, and she's getting, like, thrown up against the ceiling, smeared across the wall. The boyfriend is, uh, you know, down in the corner. Wes Craven utilized some very um, unique, or I don't know if it was Wes Craven in particular, or the cinematographer, or who the fuck designed it, but they designed this this room that would kind of, like, spin you know what I mean? They could manipulate how, how it was. So that's how they got like, you know, Rod, like Rod is really the one that's upside down, I believe. And Tina's like flipping out on the ceiling. It's, it's crazy. It's a very bloody scene. And when you're a little kid, it's like, holy fuck, that's like a lot of blood and disgusting insanity. So, uh, that's always crazy. Like to me, like Freddy Krueger, sure. He's creepy, but th the, the kills that don't even show him, in my opinion, are the scariest ones. So, like, you know, later on in the film with Johnny Depp getting killed, like, in his bedroom, like, that is just twisted. That's another example of, like, an upside-down room, and, um, you know, he gets pulled in, and, like, all of his stuff gets pulled into the into the bed, and then just, like, a fucking geyser, like, that thing in Yellowstone, what's that thing in Yellowstone Park? Old Faithful, I believe, it just <sighs> spurting up blood, crazy shit, man, and then, you know, even, even some of the scenes, like, again, that don't have Freddy Krueger, like with uh, Tina in like the the body bag, like standing down in the hallway, like just looking at Nancy, like that to me is the shit that literal nightmares are made of, and I can vouch for that because I had those nightmares from that fucking movie. Um, trying to think of some other ones, like when Rod is in the prison scene or the prison cell, rather, rather, and um, Nancy goes there like in a dream, basically, and sees like looks down and like sees Freddy like gonna fuck with him like i think that is probably one of the scariest images of freddy you know where he like looks up and ah so so creepy man so creepy and good and just fantastic man like i love the whole uh scene that leads you know 
earlier when I was talking about Tina in the body bag, uh, I think that that comes up twice in the film. I think that she's appears. I think she appears outside at one point as well in the body bag. It's been a while since I watched this flick, but you know, I, I remember as a kid watching it so many times, like uh, almost as like the only way I can describe it is if you've ever ate like really spicy potato chips, and the only way to make the the heat from your tongue go away is to consume more. That's kind of like what my mindset was with these certain films back in the day. That's why I know certain films so good. Or, you know, like, I, I can fucking quote them every word, like, that kind of stuff, because of watching them so many times to kind of, like, delude the fact that uh, it is fake, you know, because I've historically said on this channel, my dad, he's a fucking son of a bitch, he'll be like, that's real, you know, and scare the fuck out of me as, as, as a young boy, but I don't think there's any features on this particular copy. There is... um yeah, just some of that, like, early DVD bullshit, like, jump to a nightmare, scene navigation, like, you know, the original theatrical trailer, read the screenplay while you watch the film. I actually have the uh, script of Nightmare on Elm Street, um, printed it off, courtesy of Fanshawe College, one of the only good things I ever got from them, uh, other than rental of their equipment, of course. But anyways, um, I think that if you're going to watch, you know, a good franchise I would probably go with Friday the 13th over Nightmare on Elm Street because I think the movies, um, you know, I especially like from part one till about, till about part six is about as far as I go with uh, Fri Friday the 13th. I know that like certain people might say, well, I'm being a phony fuck. Like I've seen the other movies. I just think they're dog shit. You know, that's just that's just the way it is with me. So uh, with with Freddy, I think that he has less good movies than Jason. You know, and, and if you want to talk about Freddy versus Jason, I think that it's pretty fucking, it's pretty like, I have a special spot for it in my heart because it's one of like the, the first movies I've seen in theater that was like uh, R-rated. And uh, I just have this soft spot for it. But technically, like if you look at it, like it's not the best thing ever. You know, it's pretty much more of the same. And like literally the, <clears throat> excuse me, the main character in the film, that girl, I forget what her name was. But she looks like she's literally about 35 years old. And she's supposed to be a high school kid. And even Kelly Rowland looks old as shit in that movie. Like, I don't know. I, I have mixed opinions on that movie. But I do enjoy watching it every once in a while. I might watch it before Halloween's up. I don't know. Uh, this is one of those ones, though. I think that... if if you, if you Like, think of it this way, okay? Imagine if they only ever made Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. They only made Friday the 13th Part 1. Well, then you wouldn't get Jason. Let's say they made Friday the 13th Part 4, because that kind of has like everything you want in one of those movies. So, Nightmare on Elm Street 1, Friday 4, Child's Play 1, which is the best Child's Play. Um, Hellraiser 1, even though Hellraiser 2 is pretty fucking good. Um, I'm trying to think of some other. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, Fantastic. Like, there's so many franchises out there. If they only made the one film, I think that they would stand more powerful than they actually do being in a franchise. Because when people think of Freddy Krueger, they think of, you know, like the welcome to prime time, bitch, and all that stuff. Even though that's good. I love part three, especially. I think it's really good. But, you know, I, I just the one liners and stuff, I just I can't really. I don't know. It just it takes me so far out of it because I remember being a kid. And watching these movies, like the first ones for the first times and being so like scared by them. And then what, once you've seen all the sequels and stuff and you have all that, you know, all the, the knowledge of the sequels in your head, it kind of like gets thrown into a slurpee. And you just think as you think of Freddy as this goofy guy that's like playing a fucking Nintendo and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in reality, you know, he's like a vicious killer of children. All right. So. I really enjoy this film, so that'll do it for this episode. Well, uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. Leave a 666 in the comments, and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow, which will be day 26. Yeah, adios.